Hey, today I'm responding to, I don't know, some guy I don't even know anymore. Oh, hello there. <laughs> ah, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. It's a lab coat guy. I gotta go change. Okay, I'm back. How do I look? Does it fit? Do I look good? Do I look smart? Do I look like an authority figure who you should trust? I don't feel like one. I feel like I look really stupid standing here in my basement in a lab coat. These things are worn for a reason and this isn't it, but we'll try it anyway. It'll be, it'll be good. Before we start though, lab coat guy, I can only hear you in one ear. You screwed up your audio channels somehow, so hopefully you don't mind if I fix that before we continue. Oh, hello there. <laughs> hello, chemist, scientist, toy collector, Carl Bastion. I like your Miss Piggy waifu figurine. I'm just reading my real science experiments here. Oh man, your audio's clipped to hell. You're getting me nostalgic for the old days here. You know what? Give me a second. Hello, chemist, scientist, lab coat guy. Yeah, that sounds good. My name is Professor O. Oh, that's terribly unfortunate. Makes my Miss Piggy waifu figurine joke a little more uncomfortable. Also known as Professor of Objects. Oh, so it's more the Professor of O. That's still not good. Well, today I would like to talk to you about some theological arguments for the existence of God. Oh. I thought we were going to talk about toy collecting or something. Or maybe some deep lore about how the Muppets universe and the Star Wars universe are really one gigantic shared universe. Now, let me clarify. Why are you talking like that? No, let me clarify. That's not your accent or something. That's not a way real people sound. So what are you doing? When I say arguments, I'm not talking about arguing. God exists! No, he doesn't. Does too. Does not. Does too. Does not. Does too. Okay, we got it. Thank you. Does not, does not, does not. Does two, does two, does two. Does not, does two. Uh uh. Please, please, I mean it. We got it. Okay? Please, thank you. Sorry. No, 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 no. That's not the kind of arguing we're talking about. Yeah, I know. That's because that's not an argument. That's just contradiction. Well, an argument is not the same as contradiction. Can be? No, it can't. When we're talking about arguments for the existence of God, we're talking about reasons that we believe that God exists. Yeah, well, you have no potted plants in front of that curtain, so your argument is invalid. Don't you know the fucking rules? Dipshit. Moron. Fucking clown. Sorry, I'm just trying to get in that classic logic mood. I dress up in the old costume, but I kind <clears> of <throat> destroyed the hat. It was an accident. Now, first of all, I gotta be really clear. You can no more prove that God exists to someone than you could prove to an ant that an elephant exists. Then why is your video called Proof That God Exists Part 1? You have four of these. What's the point? I mean, let's look at it this way. Let's pretend that you actually were an ant. I mean, if you were an ant... Are you serious? You're going to start dressing up for this? All right, well, give me a second. Very well, let's continue. I hate everything about this. The very concept of an elephant is just so big that you, you couldn't even get it into your little head. And yet, despite making this argument, somehow you think you've got the idea of God into your little head because you're a Christian. You want to make up your mind? Well, the same is true of us as people. Yeah, I got that. I mean, God is so big and so amazing and so un understandable that there's no way we could make him small enough and understandable enough for us to be able to prove him to get him into a jar so to speak so that we could understand him okay so it's a concept the human mind is not even capable of grasping and that's not a concept that can be believed in any meaningful sense and it's not a concept that can be proven and yet the goal with this series of videos is to prove an unprovable claim so that people presumably kids believe this idea that is incomprehensible to them. And based on that description, which came straight from you, this somehow does not sound to you like a complete waste of time. But there are ways that we can try to explain him and show that he's at least reasonable enough to believe in him. Hold on, no, if you have an idea that's actually incomprehensible, that's so far beyond the human mind's ability to grasp that even providing an extremely firm and satisfactory reason to believe it even exists, which is really all you can mean by proof in this context, is impossible because the idea is too big, you can't even comprehend that it is, let alone what it is, then there's no reasonable way to believe in that because you don't even know what it is you're believing in. If you believe in something but you don't even know what it is that you believe, then you don't believe in it. There's nothing there to believe. 
and you don't have a good enough reason for you to consider it proof, which is a word that of course really doesn't fit well here in the context of discovering which entities really exist, but I'm pretty sure it just means really, really solid reasons. According to you, it's literally impossible to have that. The way you're setting this up makes it seem like Christianity is fundamentally unreasonable. And not only that, but that the foundation of its belief can't even be believed in at all, no matter how much you want to. One of those arguments, or one of those reasons that we believe in him, is called the cosmological argument for the existence of God. The what? Are you asking me? You just said it. I said, the cosmological argument for the existence of God. Yeah, I know, that's my point. You just said it. Your behavior is strange, and as a result, I dislike you. Why don't you try to say that with me? Cosmo cosmological. Can you say that? Yeah, cosmo- Say it after me. Cosmological. Cosmological. Why are you dancing at me? Leave me alone. I don't like it. Very good. No. Now, all that word means is that everything has to have a cause. No, it isn't. Cosmological means relating to the study of the cosmos. Now you're just outright lying to the kids. Which is just shocking in a piece of Christian propaganda aimed at kids. I mean, nothing can happen unless something causes it to happen. At least by our observation within space-time. From our little human perspective, but hey, maybe a non-causal process is an idea so big that it's like explaining an elephant to an ant. It's real, but it's so far beyond us that we just can't even process such a thing. Maybe non-causality is all around us. Maybe it loves us and wants to write a book to talk to us. Okay, that's that's a stretch. If I want this ant to move off of this little bench here, something has to cause it to happen. Yeah, and therefore God is the only thing that can move that ant. Because if there's a cause, it has to be my favorite one. I, I could just sit here looking at it forever, and it's never going to move. It's just a big toy plastic ant. It's literally moving right now. All the time it's moving. Every single particle inside of that ant is jiggling wildly. What's unusual in reality is not movement. What's unusual is perfect. Perfect stillness. Now, unless there's an earthquake to cause it, it's just gonna sit there. Unless I cause it to move. Oh, I see. So unless there's a natural explanation, the only explanation is that a person has to do it. So by your example, there can, in fact, be natural explanations that don't involve a person. Just making sure. It is gonna just stay there forever. For example, let's suppose I want to play with this little game. I got this really arch bad guy right here, you know who he is, and I got this good guy here, And but they're not gonna do anything until I cause them to move. Just while we're waiting for the point, um, why do these creators always make their content in a way that shows that they assume that kids are fucking idiots? This constant hyping up every word they say, the artificial excitement, dumbing everything down so far that it becomes outright inaccurate or misleading. As a father of a seven-year-old, I hate this. It's way too common, people churning out trash for kids because they assume kids' brains are trash. Maybe I'm being a little bit uncharitable with that, but I don't care. I'm classic logic and it's fun. But if I start moving this little lever, this good guy, he starts to fight the bad guy. And once I start moving this lever, the bad guy starts to fight. Do you know who your father is? I know that he was a really bad guy. I am your father. No! And then they start to fight because I am causing them to fight at all. Ha ha! Do you see what I mean though? Just the most condescending stupid drivel possible. Kids are better than this. They deserve better than this. So much for the dark side. But I caused that to happen. For example, I have here a remote control vehicle. Oh my god, we get it. You bought some toys at a garage sale. We understand. Are we going to go through all of them? This Jimmy Neutron vehicle is actually a remote control. But there's a bummer. I've lost the remote controller. Good. So that means that there's no way now for me to cause this to move across the floor by itself. It's now just a really cool decoration. No, it's not. Here in my laboratory. This is your laboratory? Then why does it look like a child's playroom? Where's all the lab equipment? What kind of experiments do you do here exactly? Why do you need a lab coat to stop stuff from splashing onto your clothes? Never mind, I don't want to know. So it just sits there on the floor doing nothing. Like you. Like, no. That doesn't work. Like, um, I'm just not as quick on the insults nowadays. Uh, like your feet. Because I'm unable to cause it to go. This R2-D2. Oh my god. How many toys are back there? This is gonna take hours. Is actually a voice-controlled 
remote control vehicle, I can say, hey R2, move ahead eight paces. I don't have any batteries in it right now. Something else that's needed to make it to be able to cause to move forward. Something else that's able to make it to be able to cause to move forward. Oh my god. The lab coat, the terrible presentation aimed at children, the bumbling fuck-ups in speech. John, did, did your spirit reincarnate into this guy? Are you in there, John? But without the cause, it will just sit there being a great decoration. Alright, that one's okay. Timmy Neutron sucks, fight me. Perhaps you've actually seen dominoes or played dominoes. Don't you do it! Don't you take out a goddamn domino set right now! We're done with the toys, come on! I have a really nice set of old wooden dominoes. Fuck you. And if you've ever done dominoes, you know that you can stack these up and you can have them go in, uh... Your ass. <laughs> I can't believe how easily this comes back. A neat pattern, you can have them turn corners and go in circles. In fact, you can even get pretty fancy with them and have them going up steps and doing really neat patterns. But once they're stacked up, about an inch apart from each other, and you can fill a hole. Don't say fill a hole. Don't give legitimacy to my terrible, terrible joke. Table with them, do all kinds of neat things. But once you tap one of them, they will knock each other down in order until finally the first one to fall will knock all of them down in sequence until finally the last one falls, which I will demonstrate for you right now. I don't need it demonstrated. I know what dominoes are. And I'm pretty sure I'm the only person watching your video. Well, I was anyway. So check this out. What I'm about to do is knock over this first one, and it's going to knock over the second one, which will knock over the next one, all the way th Yes, we got it. Flick the fucking domino already, John. I mean, Dr. O, whatever. Through this pattern until this last one falls on the floor. Now my finger is going to be the first cause. Dr. O's going to use his finger now. I hope it doesn't get me demonetized. It's going to be the thing that starts this whole sequence of falling dominoes. Oh, uh, okay, that's YouTube friendly. That's good, I guess. Are you ready? Here it goes. Watch carefully as I bump the first one and they all fall down. Just barely. That almost went horribly wrong with the one domino falling off the back of the table. But Dr. O pulled it out in the end. In a long series. But my finger was the first cause. You know, your mom... Dr. O is going to tell us about his finger and your mom. ...has a mom who has a mom who had 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 a mom going all the way back... Don't you say what I think you're gonna say. ...eventually to Eve. He said it, guys, he said it. Tack on Young Earth creationism to the list of John characteristics. It is you, isn't it, John? You're really back from the dead. Can we come to Mexico and do that pterosaur hunt now? Even if I'm wrong, hey Dr. O, do you want to go to Mexico with me and some of my patrons and a bucket of pig blood and some eucalyptus oil and build a big cage and catch some pterosaurs? All expenses paid. All you have to do is wear the lab coat and call yourself chemist scientist John Morris Pendleton a lot. I'm not even joking. I need this, please. And Eve didn't have a mom, but she had a creator. I don't know. I feel like Adam was kind of her mom and dad, or as close as it gets with cloning. And God made Adam and Eve. God was that first cause who created Adam and Eve, and then through the generations, everybody was created through their parents, and eventually everybody had a cause. Everybody eventually had a cause. You see, God was that first cause. Everything you look at in your room and outside and in creation had a first cause. Eventually, going back through history, everything had to have a first cause. Okay, so everything had to have a first cause. Even if I grant that idea, which I actually don't, I feel like notions of time and causality get pretty weird around the time of the Big Bang. It's one of those things like you were talking about where it's so far outside of our experience that it's hard for us to even wrap our heads around. And so these very simplistic assumptions humans make based on their own perceptions really have no place in the discussion. And that's what this argument and a lot of similar ones are fundamentally based on. But even if I grant it entirely, that there had to be something that made that first domino fall, 
that doesn't get us anywhere beyond maybe putting some constraints on the possible set of natural explanations we can come up with. This isn't even an argument for God, it's an argument for the universe having a certain nature, having some sort of first point in time at which some kind of event has to occur to initiate physical processes within space-time. That can be granted in its entirety, and it gets you nowhere. You have to actually argue specifically for God as an explanation for that, which people like William Lane Craig do, kinda, but so many people don't. They'll make this first part of the argument getting to the idea of a first cause, and then they'll stop and think, there, I proved God. No, you didn't even start. You didn't even try to start. What you've said here is not an argument for God. It's just an argument in favor of a couple of features you think the universe has in relation to time and causation. And it's not even really an argument for the universe being that way if you look at it. It really just starts with the assertion that the universe is that way. All things, including universes, but excluding whatever you put in the category of first causes for some reason, must have a cause, because apparently you know enough about universes to know this. Enough about all things, in fact. And this is the first premise, everything that begins to exist has a cause. Which is kind of interesting, by the way, considering that we haven't really seen anything begin to exist in the sense that's being referred to here. We see the reconfiguration of what's already physically there. That's where the idea that matter and energy cannot be created created or destroyed comes from. But the person making the argument asserts that they in fact know what happens when something begins to exist. That they know it's possible and that they know the details of it. I don't buy that you have this knowledge. The assertions go on. Time proceeds in a tidy line back to the origin point of the universe at which it just stops, and there a first cause must flick the domino, really just because you said so, because that seems intuitive to you. The universe can't be something eternal, the laws of physics can't be fundamental to reality, they can't just exist. Nope, the universe began to exist at a certain point in time, and had to be created by something that's not a universe, because you say so. And that's it. I have a hard time thinking of any theistic argument more arrogant, or frankly more absurd in the level of knowledge the arguer asserts himself to have. You know, the Bible says in the book of Romans, chapter 1, verse 20. Oh, so we're past even the barest semblance of an argument now? You barely even made an argument, you just played with your toys. It says this, for since the creation of the world, God's in- Yeah, I don't care, skipping. That means people might say that there's no God, but they really have no excuse. You can say that all you want. That doesn't make your arguments any better. Because everything they see obviously had to be caused. No, not obviously, but again, if we grant all of your assumptions and your entire argument, that in no way leads to God. So how does this stupid ass argument leave me without excuse for not believing in God? Do you think one festering trash pile of an argument is really enough to say that there's literally no possible way that you can reason reasonably fail to be convinced of the truth of a claim? Really? Because everything can't just be without having been caused in some way. And? That doesn't mean the some way was God done it. And even if they can point to what caused it, something had to cause the thing that caused the thing that caused the thing that caused the thing that they see. Okay, and then at some point there's a first cause that doesn't need a cause, and also is not a god. <gasps> now you'll hear some people say that the world began in a giant big bang. Boom! And the world was there. You know, I like that representation of it a lot. Because for one thing, it doesn't really depict it as an explosion, it depicts it as an expansion. And for another thing, at the start, everything involved in that expansion is already there, just compressed. So it avoids the whole conversation about how can something come from nothing? Because clearly we're not even talking about that. Yeah, this is pretty good. This is the one toy demonstration that I actually approve of. Well, that's a pretty good theory. But what caused the Big Bang? Uh -huh. And neither do you, no matter how much you feel like you do. Well, as we know, that Big Bang was creation, and God caused the creation. This video is called Proof That God Exists, and I think this is the first point where you're specifically arguing that the first cause had to be God, and your argument appears to be just, it was God, take my word for it. So what if I just say, no, I don't believe you? What if I say, you have to actually argue for that? You don't just get that as a freebie once you get people to grant a first cause for the sake of argument. Would that just blow your fucking mind? And so, everything had to have a cause, and ultimately there had to be that first cause 
that started everything else. And we believe that first cause had to be God. Okay, good. I like the way you put that. We believe that first cause had to be God. Yeah, you believe that. Yes. Now, as per the title of your video, how about some of that proof that God exists? Or even just some reason to believe that God did it? I mean, I know you said it's impossible to definitively prove it, and fine, okay. But you did say you can have some reasonable justification for it. But you haven't given me any. I mean, you've actually given me zero. So, can I have any? It should be pretty easy to provide because you say that we believe it had to be God, which implies that you have some argument that should establish very firmly that it had to be God and no other thing. Unless you're just believing it had to be God based on no argument at all. But no, that can't be possible. People don't do that. That'd be stupid. Nobody's ever stupid. Well, I'm going to get back to reading my book, and I'll come back next time and tell you another one of the arguments for the existence of God. Yeah, like I said, he has three more of these. I don't know about that. I don't exactly have a lot intellectual to say about these. But then again, it is fun to mock. Eh, I'll think about it. Ooh, electric experiments. Sounds shocking. Please don't. Nobody wants to hear jokes like that. Nobody. I don't care if they're five years old. This was pure agony, and this video sucks balls now and will be deservedly panned. Thanks, Carl. You just have yourself the worst day now. Stains? Plant stains. Well, that's what happens. That's the risk of being a scientist in the field of chemist scientry. This is what happens to lab coats in real work environments, right? Scientists do real shit, and the point of the coat is to catch all the splashes and plant jizz and all that kind of stuff. <laughs>